Hello, this is Bob Ehlers with Hotspot Networks, and today we're going to review Vehicle Area Network Systems, or VANs. These are systems that are designed to go into vehicles, such as buses, trains, police cars, taxi cabs, garbage trucks, or anything else with wheels. We're going to go over uh, how to implement the systems, what kind of benefits they provide, and how you can work with Hotspot Networks to deliver a solution to your community. First, I'd like to go over a quick company overview about Hotspot Networks. Hotspot Networks was founded in 2005 by former Intel engineers. We saw an opportunity to deliver wireless video solutions that were optimized for IP video and specifically IP video streaming for live video. Our routers are used for streaming engines in public safety, healthcare, commercial security, military applications, and much more. The products are designed to deliver low latency, real-time, and high bandwidth applications. Our company is rather small. We're 15 people. We're headquartered in San Luis Obispo in Central California. We're a California C corporation. Worldwide, we've sold over 5,000 of our systems. We have a broad customer base. We work with lots of different partners, and we want to work with you. Our product line includes intelligent cameras, intelligent routers, in-vehicle routing and encoding systems, and VPN solutions. Our product lines all begin with the uh, prefix hot, meaning highest or most elegant. So we have the hot cam, the hot wrap, the hot mobile, hot mesh, hot link, and hot shot. What makes hotspot routers different? Well, our routers are not just a dumb bridge. When you buy an 802.11 ABGN router, typically, uh, from one of our competitors, typically you'll find that it's capable of doing access point functions. Maybe it can be a repeater, but it's certainly not designed for the demands of IP video streaming. Our products are designed to be intelligent, programmable, react to the environment around them, be highly serviceable, provide detailed diagnostics, and are designed from the bottom up for IP video. We use an IP uh, video transport protocol. It's a time division multiple access protocol. It's non-blocking. It's not Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi uses a collision-based protocol. We use a TDMA protocol. Our products support multiple configurations uh, for topography including point-to-multipoint, point-to-point, mesh, and we can even make them work with cellular networks so that they can select the best method for backhaul connections, be it cellular, private broadband, or Ethernet. Our products are all standards-based, so they support interoperability. If you want to use 802.11 standard wireless protocols, we support that. It's a simple software switch that allows you to configure them to use our TDMA or soft uh, 802.11 protocols. Our products are designed to be low power, small in size, and we're very frequency agile. Our products operate on frequencies from 162 megahertz up to six gigahertz. So whether you're the military, you're a commercial entity, you're a public safety entity, we have radio systems that will work for you. Our edge video processors are designed to work with our wireless solutions. Basically, we determined early on that moving video all the time doesn't make a lot of sense. So we've created a set of products, our hot shot, uh, hot wrap uh, compatible products, which allow you to stream video into local storage so I can have a camera sending video into a hot, uh, hot spot uh, uh, micro in VR. It can record the video locally at full resolution and full frame rate. 
and then it can transcode it and transmit it back over cellular, over Wi-Fi uh, for uh, local central diagnostics and support. All of our edge video processors are designed to be very low power so they can run off a solar or battery or they could even be worn. They're rugged with a very wide temperature range from minus 30 up to 70 degrees Celsius. They're designed for H.264 encoding and transcoding. So they're very performance oriented around video. They're flexible. They're computing engines. They're wireless. They provide power over Ethernet, and they can also take sensor I.O., and they allow you the application choice of running Windows or Linux. You can run a full version of Windows on our micro NVRs, and you can run our own software, or you can run third-party software. We're just about to release a new product we call the Hot Cam, and the Hot Cam is an innovative smart camera it's developed around an Intel embedded processor. It's very fast. It runs Windows or Linux. It's designed to support full routing functions over wireless and wired networks. It supports full storage, including eSATA, uh, running a hard disk drive or a solid state drive. It's got wide temperature support from minus 20 to 70 degrees Celsius. It doesn't need a fan. It draws very low power. It supports our MVE and MVV software, so you can have uh, the camera stream video over cellular or backhaul it uh, on events uh, along with metadata. It's got your choice of lenses. And again, it's very compact and very easy to install. This product is expected to release in the third quarter of 2014 and will be part of a long-term strategy that Hotspot Networks has for scalable edge video processing. And you'll learn a lot more about that in the coming months. The Hot Cam will also be available uh, as intrinsically safe uh, builds where it's explosion proof and appropriate for places in the gas zone, uh, such as oil refineries, uh, offshore platforms, or in large uh, chemical uh, fabrication plants. Uh, it will be intrinsically safe and it'll have the same low power fanless design. Let's get into the details of vehicle area network systems. This is a van. Well, the traditional answer from our competitors is to put an NVR in a car, a network video recorder, into a car. But Hotspot Network's views of vehicle area network system has been much different. It's a black box for, for vehicles. We view a van as being like a flight recorder is in airplanes for a vehicle. We record all the different vehicle subsystems uh, including your engine diagnostics, your location, fare box, your lighting, your siren, your land mobile radio, uh, your uh, a, a, virtually any subsystem that exists in a vehicle can be recorded and we can marry that video up uh, with the metadata to create a consolidated record of everything that that vehicle does. For instance, you can have a vehicle area network in a police car, a taxi cab, a delivery truck, a garbage truck, a school bus, an ambulance. All of these systems, all of these different vehicles have different requirements for data gathering. And the micro NVR combined with our MVV software, that's the mobile video vault so software, is designed to pull data from all of the different subsystems on these different vehicle types and append it to the video as metadata. And that metadata becomes fully searchable. Examples of metadata are shown here and include everything from GPS position and time to the speed of the vehicle, the direction of the vehicle, the acceleration of the vehicle, 
whether the sirens or lights are on, whether the brakes were depressed, whether it was an engine failure, uh, whether a gun lock and a police car was unlocked, uh, are the headlights being modulated? Uh, you know, if it's a garbage truck, was the uh, garbage can lift el element uh, implemented? On a school bus, was the stoplight stop light arms uh, on and, and uh, were people blowing past the car or the vehicle uh, when it was stopped at a, at a safe location? Uh, and so the, the amount of metadata that can be gathered is virtually limitless. The important thing is to index and gather that data so that it can be searched later on. So Hotspot has created our vehicle area network system, which is a comprehensive, scalable solution, which gathers sensor data, combines it with video, and that video can be from up to 32 cameras in a vehicle. That information is then all stored on a micro NVR. It can be presented locally in the vehicle through a tablet, through a mobile data terminal that already exists in the vehicle, or through a wireless client of any kind. And it can be presented in a web interface. It's uh, universal. That video can also be stored so that when the vehicle gets back to a home location, be it a police station, a school bus yard, uh, a hospital, wh wherever, uh, and wirely transmitted from the vehicle to a base station where it can be stored. And it's stored temporarily, maybe for three days, maybe for a week, uh, where the, the probability of someone wanting to search that video is fairly high. And you keep that video on a hard disk, uh, which is locally accessible and fairly fast. From that system, you can search using a client across all of the vehicles and all of the data that's stored in that local server. We have an agent that's running on the MVV box out in the car and it's making determinations as to what the priority uh, for the video transfer should be and it can look at the meta tags and say uh, you know there was a rapid acceleration event or the lights were on or a ticket was issued or the fare box was implemented or a door was open or whatever the tag is, you can create uh, events that cause that particular video segment to be ranked in priority. And then it can be transferred back to that base station. An agent on the base station can then make determination about should the video be transferred to headquarters for long-term storage. And so it'll again look at that metadata and it can say recompress the video down, uh, subsample the video to a lower frame rate, uh, reduce the resolution, uh, mark specific events as being more important and keep them on hard drive versus putting them on tape. All of those determinations are made by the agent before they get transferred back up to an upstream server. The unique thing about MVV is that a client can search across all of the different storage locations, the vehicle, the base station, the uh, headquarters, hard disk, or even on tape. Find a specific piece of video that they want to recall and then make a request to get it. And the user never has to know where the video came from. In the vehicle, we have a number of different elements, and those include our micro NVR running the MVV software system, a sensor device uh, or a set of sensor devices, and those can be everything from our GPS receiver to a MEMS receiver that, that tells us that's the micro electro, electromagnetic sensor that tells me the acceleration and the direction of travel of the device. I can use sensors to tie into the OBD2 data from the vehicle. That's the diagnostic data. I can tie into the light bar and sensors and grab data about that. And I can pull all of that information along with audio into the MVV system. I correlate that data by date and time and I match it up to the video. So I create a bulletproof evidentiary record 
of everything that happened in that vehicle. And then I can transmit it back using the Hotmobile wireless router, which is very fast. It can transfer up to two gigabytes per minute of video. And I can uh, move the video from the vehicle back up to our base station. Again, I can scale this. So we have our micro NVR 1000, which is appropriate for one to three cameras. If you need more than three cameras, you can go to our micro NVR 1500 or to our micro NVR 2000, which can support up to 32 cameras. And again, the same application architecture applies regardless of the version of the micro NVR that you use. For live viewing, you don't want to do exactly the same thing. Live view, you want to be able to take the video, adapt it to something like a cellular network, which is ubiquitous, and you want to be able to maintain constant connection. For that purpose, Hotspot has created the MVE, or Mobile Video Edge System. MVE records the video from your cameras at full resolution, full frame rate on the micro NVR. And then when you want to look at the video live over your cellular connection, the MVV server in the car talks to the MVE proxy at the base station. And they're constantly exchanging information about uh, network quality, available bandwidth, and bit errors. And they're adjusting the stream data rate to fit the available cellular connection. So you always remain connected, and then the video adjusts itself automatically between a, uh, a user-settable uh, dynamic rate transcode based on the resolution, the frame rate, and the compression level. And again, the user can say which of those three elements he wants to favor. Is, is video quality more important than the frame rate? Uh, is the compression level uh, less important than the video resolution? And the user can decide that. The proxy server then presents the video back out to client systems. And that client system can be a third-party VMS server. It can be clients that are able to look at RTSP or RTP streams. And it makes itself look like the cameras are locally attached. So you can use the MVE system with any pre-existing third-party VMS system. Every one of our solutions, the MVE or MVV system, relies on a micro NVR, which is an intelligent edge processing, video processing platform. Our smallest product is our micro NVR 1000. It's a one inch by four inch by four inch, eight watt solution. It's got a wide temperature range. It can support up to one terabyte of hard disk space. It runs Windows 7 Pro or Linux and it has hotspot proprietary disk protection to make sure that the system doesn't get corrupted as a result of power failures or start and stops. It's a very flexible, small, lightweight, power efficient system that won't drain the batteries of a vehicle and will run very efficiently from solar power or battery power product that we're about to release in the third quarter of 2014 is our micro NVR 1500. This is a companion or the next generation of the micro NVR 1000. It has two gig ethernet ports. It has uh, full wireless for both uh, 80211 and cellular. It supports uh, video capture using an optional DVI, uh, HDMI, or VGA capture import. So you can actually attach this to a, a, a third-party system, capture video off the console of that system, and run our MVE or MVV software on the box and have uh, additional cameras 
beyond the, the local VMS be encoded and transmitted. It has a very wide temperature range from minus 30 to 70 degrees C, uh, and it's designed specifically for solar. Uh, and again, if you want to run a third-party VMS application on it, you have your choice of Linux or Windows uh, to be able to run the system. The largest MicroNVR product is the MicroNVR 2000. And this is a server class uh, device. It supports RAID, uh, so you can have up to four terabytes of storage that's redundant and hot swappable. It has a uh, Intel i7 architecture with QuickSync H.264 hardware acceleration. It can do up to 120 frames per second of 1080p encode and decode. So if you need to look at a lot of cameras at the same time, this product can handle that. If you're using our Mobile Video Edge product, it can live stream many cameras at the same time. Uh, and if you're using Mobile Video Edge, it can transcode and compress the video for transmission uh, over your local broadband network. It's shock and vibe resistant, and it's designed for transportation, it can operate in wide temperatures, and it's relatively low power. The MicroNVR 2000 consumes about 40 watts, so it's, it's designed for a bus or something with an auxiliary power system. It's not designed for solar operation. This table here shows the appropriate use of our three different micro NVR products. And uh, you know, we can give you advice on what the appropriate product is for your specific application. Wireless transfer is a very important element in any kind of mobile video application. When the vehicles come back to their home base, you want to be able to transfer the video as fast as possible. You want to be able to support as many vehicles at one time as you can. So when you look at your bus yard and you have 300 buses that are home based in that yard, you need to look at how many simultaneous buses will arrive at that location at once. And then you can ap apply uh, the appropriate number of base stations you can apply the appropriate frequencies and, and channel widths. We can determine the range of coverage, and we can come up with the appropriate RF design constraints to meet your requirements. So, uh, you know, an, an important element in this is how long it takes to do your wireless transfer th so that you don't drain the batteries on your vehicles. If you have to leave the vehicles on for eight hours, uh, and you're drawing 40 watts per, per unit, uh, that can be a lot of power, and it can be very costly to replace those batteries. So sizing your system is an element that hotspot networks can support you with. Backend storage management is every bit as important as gathering the data to begin with. Our mobile video vault system, we just start at the vehicle. We gather the metadata, we tag the video with the metadata, we transfer the video. But then what we really need is an intelligent management system for storage that runs in the back end. And that's where our partnership with Solaritech and their Phoenix RSM system becomes so important. Phoenix provides the management architecture for moving and managing your video across multiple locations and across multiple media types. So Phoenix provides the user interface, the client, and the storage architecture to be able to move the video from hard disk at the bus yard or at the base station back to headquarters, from hard disk to tape, and allow you to search that video seamlessly. Here are a couple of examples of where the mobile video uh, vault and mobile video edge vehicle area network solutions have been buses. One application is to use it to monitor stop arm ticketing. So in many jurisdictions, when a school bus is stopped at a crossing and the bus driver has extended the stop arm and turned on the blinking lights, 
Vehicles are required to come to a full and complete stop until the stop arm is retracted and the lights are turned off. If you pass the vehicle while those lights are on and the arm is out, you can be fined. Well, one way to pay for a vehicle safety system to make sure that children aren't hit by passing cars when a school bus is stopped is to put the vehicle area network system from hotspot onto the bus. And when those arms are, extra are extended and the lights are on, we capture the vehicle GPS location, the time of day, whether the doors are open, what, were the brakes applied, was the vehicle at a complete stop, and then we get the video and we see any vehicles that pass the bus at the time that it was stopped. You can issue tickets at that point. Um, you can go out after vehicle operators and you can teach them not to pass a bus and create an unsafe condition for uh, children. You can also pay for your on-vehicle system through ticket revenue. So it's a, a system that can be used to actually uh, pay for itself, make it safer for children in the, in the school bus environment, and, and overall uh, increase the safety and performance of school buses. Another application would be for transit buses. And in this case, looking at the bus lane or bus stops to make sure that there aren't vehicles parked in the bus stop or there aren't vehicles violating the bus lane restrictions. In this case, we would do exactly the same thing as the school bus. We would look at the position of the bus, uh, GPS location. We can mark where the bus stops are. Uh, we can mark where the bus is relative to its lane position in the road. Uh, plus or minus, uh, you know, three or four feet. And with that information, we can determine if the bus is being delayed. Uh, we can put an alert button on the wheel or dash of the bus so that the driver can indicate that somebody's parked in the bus lane or somebody's uh, stopped in the bus stop. And uh, that information can be either gathered and transferred at the end of the shift or it can be sent immediately over cellular network uh, to a, a ticketing and, and tow service. So you can actually have the bus pull up to a bus stop. I, the driver can identify that there's somebody parked in the bus stop. A forward-facing camera can capture the license plate and the vehicle that's parked in that lane. That information can be immediately transferred over cellular back to a base station where somebody can go ahead and issue a ticket, dispatch a tow truck, and your buses then uh, end up being safer because they can pull into the curb and allow ha handicapped or elderly passengers to get off the bus. Uh, the buses can maintain their schedule integrity and it can improve uh, rider safety and schedule integrity. So, what do we expect you as a system integrator to do with this information? Well, go out and create projects. Talk to transit districts, talk to police departments, talk to ambulance service, talk to garbage trucks. Look at what types of data they need to gather in order to improve the training, the reliability, and the performance of their particular organization. Bring that information back to Hotspot Networks and we can help you organize and design a system that gathers that data, reports the data out uh, to end users in a usable way. They can put them into business reports that are actionable. And we can actually help you define uh, you know, revenue models that allow them to pay for these systems. So again, look for uh, projects. Look for a project sponsor. You know, identify that single person that is going to be the champion of your project. Uh, and that can be an IT manager or police chief or uh, the transit manager for a bus district or for a school district. Get that one person to be your sponsor and have them work with us on defining your requirements. Uh, then, you know, look for your project sponsoring organization. Who wants to pay for this? And it may be multiple organizations. And you may need to work with the community to build 
a, a base uh, from grassroots to get the system in and up and running. But the benefits to your community can be very strong. And it's a fairly easy sell to get these kinds of systems in place. Again, thank you. For and if you have any questions, please contact us at support at hotspot. That's H-A-U-T-E-S-P-O-T dot net. That's hotspot networks. And we'd be happy to answer any questions you have about vehicle area network systems. Thank you very much.